Ladies and gentlemen, we are Timo and we are glad to present the results of our equity research on that scheme. We initiated a buy recommendation with a 12 month target price of 141 rubles per share, projecting 47% higher return than its closing price in 2017. We have come to our conclusion by using discounted cash flow methods and multiples analysis. This scheme group is the largest retailer of children's goods in Russia. It offers toys, products for expectant mothers and infants, shoes and clothes, stationery, craft materials and products for active recreation. The company was founded in 1947 and is undisputed market leader in the Russian children's goods market with 17% market share. That Skimir's product portfolio consists of 30,000 items which can be grouped into four categories – newborns, toys, fashion, large items and others. Largest percentage of revenue is generated from toys category, which accounts for 33% of total revenue. In 2011, the Dead Skimmer launched online store. Share of online sales in total sales grew by more than 1%, reaching 3.5% in 2016. The company's structure includes the Skimmer stores and Early Learning Center, which is a British brand known for sale of development tools. There are 516 Dead Skimmer branded stores and 41 ELC stores. The company generates considerable amount of its revenue from sales in Moscow region. Implementation of loyalty programs, affordable pricing and customer serv satisfaction service correspond to company's customer-oriented service strategy. Under loyalty program called YoYo, loyalty card is given to customers after any purchases. With accumulated bonuses, customers can cover up to 20% of cost of purchases. Systema owns 52% of shares, 14% belong to Russia-China Investment Fund, and the remaining part owned by other investors. That scheme the executive management team has been a key driving force behind the company's overall success. Most of the members of management board joined after a company after 20 12 and contributed to the high number of stores open and more than 10% increase in the revenue in subsequent year. Overall, children's good market is expected to see stable 1.5% growth in the next years. The Eskimir is by far the most important market leader in its segmentation. Internet and specialized store subsegment are dominated by Deskimir with 7% and 44% market share respectively. Deskimir takes the leading position among its competitors with the highest prompted awareness of 97% and the highest number of stores of 557. 71% of customers prefer buying from Deskimir if they need to. Online sales are expected to make up of 10% of total revenues by the end of 2020. In this regard, Deskimir has taken major steps such as the construction of distribution centers and implementation of uh, in-store pickup option. Macroeconomic situation. In 2017, Russian economy saw stable growth thanks to firm oil prices and growing macro stability. Increasing foreign capital investments and growing domestic demand also fueled this growth into higher figures. If we expect the current progression will still be in place at least by the next years, fluctuating around 1.8% year-on-year jump. Children's good market has proven to be resistant to economic downturns during re recent recession. Central Bank of Russia uh, implemented a cut in the key rate from 8.25% to 7.75%, uh, which is driven to reduce inflation rate. And according to World Bank estimates, in our opinion, uh, inflation rate will remain stable around 3 to 4 percent in the coming years. Overall population growth is predicted to experience only slight decrement by the next decade, but basically to remain steady. However, in the number of children there has been a striking boom of 2.8 percent annual growth rate before 2015, which was then projected to be 1.4 percent. And the same situation has happened to Kazakhstan side with 1.2 uh, growth anticipation until 2020. Sales of the company witnessed twofold increase between 2013 and 2016, and based on projections, it will rise more than two times by 2021. The main drivers of future growth based on the following factors. We accounted for the increase in the number of stores by 300 within five years by using ramp up rates by considering 30%, 80%, and 100% capacity rates in the first three years, respectively. As usage rate of internet increased throughout the country, company targets 10% share from the online sales by the end of 2021. Another positive point is that a pickup service was initiated, providing buyers to collect their online order at any supermarket of the chain. Loyalty card program 
program helped to boost the revenues of the company. We also assume that gross margin will slightly decline over the years, but being consistent around 33% because of the planned price reduction of the products offered to address the demand of price sensitive buyers. Our team chose capex to sales ratio to forecast the payoff pay effect initiated the investment by, made by the company. The result is satisfactory as we expect it to decrease less than 2% because of the stable growth in sales, implying that the company uses its assets efficiently. Cash conversion cycle of the company improved over the given years and according to the past data, the company generated cash in two months, yet it worsened slightly in 2015. This could be stemmed from the sudden consequences of economic recession. Seasonal factor affects the, to the length of cash conversion cycle in the first six months of 2017. We have used income and market approaches in our valuation analysis. The result of income approach utilizing discounted cash flows methodology was referred as a primary decision source due to its ability to capture future benefits. However, the market approach was used to verify the results of calculations performed under the income approach. A financial model was prepared to make a forecast on future performance of Detsky Mir. The forecast utilized company data as a main source of assumptions. The sales revenue were driven by three main sources. New stores openings, existing stores ramp-ups, and growing share of online sales. Cost of goods sold forecast is based on company guidance over gross profit margin. The trend of decreasing margin was observed in recent years due to policy of price reduction in offline sales. Next step involved reaching to EBIT which we managed to do based on company's most recent guidance update. Using it forecast on each main item of selling general and administrative expense was made. Capital expenditures were assumed to consist of two main sources, expansion and maintenance capex. Expansion capex is linked to annual store openings and new distribution centers construction. Coming to maintenance capex, we assumed it to be as a difference between depreciation expense and repair expense. Using the calculated data, we arrived at free cash flow for the firm. Coming to weighted average cost of capital calculation, we have first calculated VAC in dollars and then transferred it into rubles. Uh, we think that it gives more accurate results as the Russian market has been very volatile due to political and economical turmoil in the past few years. Therefore, we believe that the prices in the market are distorted, which makes it difficult to correctly assess risk premiums. Long-term growth rate for terminal value calculation was taken as 4% based on long-term forecast on Russian inflation rate. The target price under the income approach is 141 rubles per share, which is 47% higher than 2017 closing price of 96 rubles. In order to value the company in market level, we also applied for a peer valuation in our report. We selected peers of Detsk Mir, some of which we used in beta calculation. We focused on three multiples, EV EBITDA, EV sales and PE based on data for 2017 and calculated medium for each multiple. The price ranged from 120 rubles to 146 rubles, which exceeded the closing price date for 31st December 2017. EV sales ratio almost matched with the price calculated with DCF model, which was 141 rubles at the same date. We considered three risk headings for debt schemer, market risk, financial risk, business and operational risk. In case of market risk, we defined limitation. As stores operate only in two countries, it carries market risk in case of economic situation worse in both countries. Additionally, since economies of Russia and Kazakhstan are almost on the same way movement, it can impact more than expected. The second involves political difficulties, created by sanctions imposed in Russia threatens economy for debt schemer too. As time span for a period of sanctioned lenses, it influences on operations of Detskimir since Detskimir is import-based retailer. Coming to financial risk, we considered currency risk. Recent rubble depreciation affected all the sectors and economy of Russia. These fluctuations in exchange rate narrows purchases of Detskimir from abroad. In case of business and operational risk, we observed new entrants as a potential threat. There are many competitors of Detskimir in Russian market and it's probable that the number of them will increase, so it can cause revenue of Detskimir to go down. In the sense of customers, Detskimir provides demands of children in the market. Any change in birth rate of children will directly impact on sales of Detskimir simultaneously. The final supply chain management risk comes from the fact that Detskimir imports what it sells, so any delay or problem in supply can impact on Detskimir sales. Our team has also performed the sensitivity analysis to investigate an effect of WAC and LTGR changes to the share price. 
the maximum share price is achieved at 228 rubles with WAC being equal to 10% and LTGR to 5%, whereas lowest price was at 14% WAC and 3% LTGR.